When I was out in Vietnam, my Razer phone got stolen. Now, I'll tell that story in time, but I wasn't done with that phone. I didn't even have it for a year, and it was my favorite phone that I've ever had. I was so sad to lose it, but it did give me the opportunity to work with the Razer phone too. And after spending about three weeks with this phone, I wanted to make a review as I did with the first one. Let's start with some changes to the phone. Razer had a few issues that needed sorting out with their first edition, and it seems like almost every complaint was not only taken in consideration, but carefully reworked. There was a lot of care and attention put into the second rendition. For example, the first phone had a metal back, which made NFC difficult and wireless charging impossible. The new phone, however, has a glass back that makes for much better NFC, making things like Google Pay very easy to use, as well as offering the ability to charge your phone with a wireless charger. The only issue I've seen with this is the components for the wireless charger are down here at the bottom of the phone, so you kinda gotta place it just right, or buy Razer's wireless charging dock, and that thing's 100 bucks, so screw that. The glass back also gives the Razer Phone 2 a much better look and feel that many of my friends have remarked on. Another thing about the way the phone feels is it's very heavy. Now, this is gonna depend on the person, but I like a heavy phone. Makes me feel like I put my money into a quality piece of tech, and it also feels like this thing would survive a pretty good hit. Makes the phone feel substantial, and it's something that I liked about the first Razer phone as well. Now this next thing is one of my favorite things about the phone. It's one of those small things that makes all the difference, but the Razer logo on the back here glows. You have a chroma app here that allows you to pick a static color, make any color you want breathe, or have the phone cycle through the colors as the screen is on which is pretty cool and makes it feel very customizable. With 16.8 million color options, you can have it match any case you get for it or just have it cycle through like I do. The logo also acts like a notification light, which is great for me since I tend to keep my phone on silent for most of the day. When I come to my desk and see the icon glowing blue, I know someone messaged me. When it's yellow, I know someone sent me a Snapchat, and when it's red, I know I've got an email. Now I gotta say, as much as I love this feature, it would be nice to be able to choose the colors for specific apps. I haven't found a setting for this, but for example, if I have two apps that make the logo glow blue, it'd be nice to change one of those apps to purple so I know if it's my messages app or Twitter. Small complaint, but it'd be nice to see this in an update. Another thing about this would be nice is having more chroma options. Having it cycle through colors is cool, but what about breathing through them or pulsing? I may be asking for too much here, but for a feature that absorbs about 3% of your battery life per hour, it could be giving me more for what it's taking. You can, however, adjust the brightness to save on battery and even just not have it on if you're scared of eating your precious screen time. With that in mind, how is the battery? Well, it's the same as before, which is still more than plenty. I have the resolution at 1440p, the frame rate at 120Hz, and the chroma lighting on when my phone is awake, and I still get about two days of use without needing a charge. Just so you know, you can lower the resolution to 1080p, the frame rate down to 90, and even 60fps, and turn off the chroma lighting and have a pretty significant difference, but it's just not something that I really worry about with a 4000 milliamp battery. And the phone charges so fast with the cable that it comes with that the battery life is never a worry on my mind. The phone will go from 0 to 50% in almost exactly 30 minutes, and 50%, at least for me, will still last me a day and a half, and I've been using this phone for about 3 weeks now. Alright, so it's got a big battery. What else is going on under the shell? Well actually, this phone, like its predecessor, has some pretty impressive specs. The Snapdragon 845, the Adreno 630, 8GB of RAM, and 64GB of internal storage, with up to 512GB of upgradable storage. The phone also supports more carriers than the original, with both CDMA and GSM carriers available. I remember a lot of people saying a huge turnoff with the Razer phone was not being able to use their provider, which makes this kind of a big deal. Enjoy the bloatware from Verizon, by the way. The phone's signal is better than the first as well. I'm not sure if it was the antenna or what, but the original Razer phone used to drop calls or get a bit scratchy, and not once have I had a problem with this second edition. Like I said, Razer really listened to the complaints that people had with the original Razer phone. Other fixes include the IP67 dust and water resistance, the more powerful backlight, which many still complain about not being bright enough, but is still better than the original, the vibration motor, which used to sound awful, now sounds like a vibration motor should, even the speakers are improved. I can't believe how much louder they are while still sounding very nice. Now, they're not going to be a top-of-the-line Bluetooth speaker, but they kick really hard, especially for being waterproofed. I do notice a small bit of distortion at max volume, but with the speakers aimed right at you, and with little possibility of your fingers and thumbs getting in the way, I don't see much of a reason for you to need to put this on full blast anyway. The speakers are that good. Now, I have heard people say that the speakers ruin the design of the phone, makes the phone blocky and ugly, and to that I have to say, well, you're just a shallow little jerk, aren't you? Sure, it makes the phone a bit blocky, but that's more than worth it to me to be able to hear what I'm trying to listen to. I don't do that whole cupping the bottom of my phone so my friends can hear the video I'm trying to show them thing. And when it comes to deciding between beauty and functionality, I'm gonna pick functionality every time. Who am I trying to impress here? It's my phone. 
Another necessary improvement Razer made was with the camera. This phone comes with two new Sony sensors giving you both wide-angle lens at 12 megapixels and a telephoto lens also at 12 megapixels. The front camera is still the same 8 megapixel beauty we had before, but there's a lot more settings available than last time. However, the camera still does fall short compared to other phones on the market, and if you're the kind of person who bases this decision on this aspect, then you may be barking up the wrong tree here. With my first Razer phone, I disliked the camera so much that I downloaded the Google Pixel APK and used that. I haven't had a reason to do that this time. At least, not yet, as I feel this camera does have a lot more to offer than the original, but I may end up downloading another APK again to see if it makes a difference. Razer does do a good job at getting the hardware in there, but their camera software could still use some work. Let's get into some other things I like before we move on to the cons and improvements. Nova Launcher Prime. They still just give this to you, and being able to customize the phone specifically to me right out of the box is just nice. I heard many times, especially with the first Razer phone, that the power button felt awkward for some people. It was in a weird place, or it felt like it might break after a while of usage, but because of Nova Launcher, that just isn't an issue. Tap to wake up, tap to sleep, the only thing I even use the power button for is the fingerprint reader. Problem solved. It's a much nicer way of getting to the phone anyway, and it leaves the power button in a good condition. Though I do have to say it does feel a bit cheap. My first Razer phone never had a power button breaking issue, but it did seem like something people were dealing with. Another app that Razer integrated was Razer Cortex, which is not really for me, but if you're the type who plays video games on your phone, then this app gives you access to a game booster. Let's you adjust the in-game frame rate, optimizing performance to the game, etc, etc. And speaking of optimization, this phone is optimized like crazy. It's a basic reskin of Android 8.1, which is perfect since they give you Nova Launcher and let you customize. Back to optimizations though, I have this device set to 120Hz and not once has it stuttered on me. I've done some pretty decent customizations as well and it still performs beautifully, which is great because what's the point of 120Hz if it stutters as you scroll through your apps and pages on the internet? The last thing I love about this phone is no bloatware. I hope Razer continues to do that as the only real bloatware that comes on this device is Netflix, and I'm not exactly upset to have that on my phone anyway. Now let's move on over to the cons. There aren't actually that many. The first con is the headphone jack. Razer sells a lot of products with a headphone jack, and it'd be really nice to be able to use lavalier mics with this phone. This phone comes with very competent Dolby Atmos software that could be really useful, and it feels like they're shooting themselves in the foot by giving us access to this software, and then gimp it by only really putting it towards the speakers. Sure, you can use the little DAC they give you, but who's going to carry around that flimsy little adapter everywhere? If you want to give us a headphone jack, don't jerk us around. Give us the option to use our devices the way you claim you want us to. Smartphones are supposed to be our Swiss army knives. We have music, we have media, we have maps, and we have the internet, and yet this beautiful little audio device gimps its own software. It just doesn't make any sense to me. The next con is the Chroma app. This one is not as big and can easily be improved through a software update if they cared enough, but I'd like to be able to pick specific colors for specific apps when I get notifications through them. It's cool that Facebook Messenger, Twitter, and my messages apps light up when someone texts me, but they all glow blue, which just isn't very helpful. Then again, most normal people have their phone's text tones on, so this might just be a me thing, but I think it'd be nice. This phone sells for $799 USD and is my favorite phone that I've ever had. It doesn't feel much different than the original Razer phone, more like a Razer phone 2.0, fixing all the original issues and adding in their own improvements as well, which is probably why I like it so much. I hope my review was helpful to you, and if you're due for an upgrade, perhaps you'll consider getting the Razer phone too.